right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Harlingen City Commission meeting. The time is now 5.30. We'll call this meeting to order. It has been posted as required by state law. We do have a quorum. Um, Commissioner Mesmer is, uh, was unable to be with us today. However, the remaining uh, members of the commission are here, and we do have a quorum. I'll ask you all to stand and have um, Assistant City Manager Josh Ramirez lead us in invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you bestow about the great city of Harlingen. We thank you for all those traveling to come and to visit their loved ones and those who are traveling home to spend time with their loved families and their loved ones that they haven't seen for a while. Uh, we thank you as we prepare to receive you, Christ, on this Christmas Eve that is coming upon us. And we ask that you continue blessing all of us and all our citizens as we prepare for the new year. In Christ, your name, amen. 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 Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Mark, if you would read the conflict of interest, please. Yes, Mayor. Under state law, a conflict of interest exists if a council member or certain members of that person's family has a qualifying financial interest in an agenda item. Members with a conflict of interest cannot participate in the discussion nor vote on the agenda item. Are there any known conflicts of interest to disclose at this time? I have none. Uh, 3C. None. <coughs> Excuse me. None. And none. <coughs> All right. Thank you. We will move on to presentation of awards. Callista? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have two award presentations, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Every month, we've been recognizing local businesses as the Mayor's Business of the Month. So before I invite the owner up for a photo and to say a few words, we have prepared a video for you. Hi, my name is Amy Melchor, and I'm the owner of Island Vibes Smoothies and More. So basically, it's a plant-based smoothie store. We offer lemonades, iced teas, meal preps, and many more other options. Uh, what inspired me to open my own business is that I just always had a passion for health. Basically what separates us from the other guys is we are a plant-based store. We focus on nutrition. We also want people to know that we do use whole vegetables and fruit. We don't add any artificial flavorings or preservatives. We use all natural ingredients. <coughs> My plans for the future are to offer um, easier, more convenient ways for uh, customers to purchase their meals and uh, put in their orders. Uh, I do want to open a second location. I just haven't figured out where to yet. <laughs> we hope you guys come by and check it out. You might become a new regular. Our location is 712 North 77 Sunshine Strip, Suite 22. So as you saw in the video, this month's uh, Mayor's Business of the Month is Island Vibes, Smoothies and More, and owner Amy Melchor is here tonight. So Amy, if you would like to come say a few words. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for choosing me. Uh, this is definitely a blessing and an early Christmas gift. Um, it's, it's an honor. Uh, I'm really new to the community and this is my first store. I do have other plans to open other uh, properties that are similar to Island Vibes. Uh, of course, it's gonna be here in Harlingen. Uh, I do want to offer unique places that um, other bigger cities do have, so hopefully that'll attract more customers and more clientele. So that's all I wanted to say, and thank you again uh, for choosing me. It's a, definitely a blessing. Well, Amy, I want to congratulate you on this um, award. And for those that don't know, um, our communications department actually put out a request for 
uh, nominations from the community. And so overwhelmingly, you were chosen by the community for this award. So this makes it even sweeter knowing that you are new to this space and that you are already making a name for yourself and the community has embraced this uh, healthy way of living. And I think it's fantastic. I know I went and I visited your store and I had what was it? The the signature drink is the trop. Say it. The trop uh, island vibe. Island vibe, yes. and it was delicious. And for those that don't know, it has I think spinach, bananas, strawberries, coconut cream, coconut yes, cream, and, yes. and uh, I added a little protein, and it yes. was it was delicious, and it it was a meal in and of itself. So I encourage everybody to to go give them a try. Um, and now, if the commission will join me for a photo with Amy, that'd be great. Moving on. All right, so our next award is going to the Harlingen Housing Authority. We want to recognize them for all the work that they do to make a difference in our community. And joining us here today, and if you'll please stand well to be recognized if I call your name, CEO Hilda Benavides, Chair Carlos Charlie Perez, Vice Chair Irma Sanchez Peña, Commissioner Bettina Elliott, and staff Mary Bierto and Diana Perez. If we can have a round of applause. <laughs> the Harlington Housing Authority's mission is to provide affordable housing, promote self-sufficiency, and revitalize neighborhoods, as well as serve others with the highest level of professionalism, integrity, honesty, fairness, and equality. Since 2019, the Harlingen Housing Authority has consistently received the National Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials Agency Merit Awards. The NAHRO Agency Awards Program gives national recognition to the achievement and innovation of agency members to provide additional opportunities to inform the public of the best housing and community development and to create a resource bank of information on significant innovative activities performed by the housing and redevelopment agencies. This year, they took home the Merit Award for their COVID-19 vaccine clinic and back to school event at Market Days here in Harlingen. So congratulations. And if you would like to come and say a few words. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for the recognition. It is greatly appreciated. We are grateful to be in such a beautiful city and to provide the services that we provide to the families that are in need of housing. We also provide a lot of social service um, activities for our youth and for our residents. So thank you so much for the recognition, Mayor and Commissioners. We appreciate it. Thank you. I just want to say that uh, it was an honor when we were at the national convention. It's held every year. Uh, several years when I joined the board, uh, I was at one of the meetings and I saw everybody getting an award and I said, how come we're not getting any? And that's when it all started. So I gave that duty to the, our staff and ever since we've been winning every year. And when awesome. they recognize you throughout the nation, because it's, all, it's a national conference and uh, people ask, where's Harlingen? And they would come and ask us, and we tell them, and they heard uh, very few towns from the Valley get these awards. Uh, and it was an honor to, to be upstage and get this award and be recognized uh, with, uh, be, with all your peers there at present, and then the recognition you get afterwards because, oh, yeah, because they give us a little tag that says award winner. 
So they come, with, we have that tag, and they come to us, oh, you're an award winner, what did you guys do? And they're trying to get ideas, you know. Right now, I want to uh, recognize Miss Mary Prieto because she, she's the, the one that does all the work. She does the paperwork. She, she has to do, uh, I, I would tell them, we do so much that we don't get recognized with. All it takes is writing. And, and I have that experience from the JCs when we were in the JCs back in the 70s. And it, all it takes is just writing a report because who knows, maybe nobody's going to turn in one. And you're the only one. So that's how you win. In Knights of Columbus, we do the same thing. So I, I have that experience, and I brought that experience to that board. And that's how we w were recognized. And again, I want to thank the commission, Mayor, for the recognition you're giving us. Thank you. Thank you. And I just, I, you know, Charlie, thank you for your many years of service and the, the rest of the commission and, of course, Hilda and your staff. You are incredible. Um, I do want to share a little bit with you while I have this opportunity. Just um, yesterday, I was over at Le Moyne Gardens and, um, you know, the incredible event that happened yesterday at the Boys and Girls Club. And so when I was getting ready to, to leave, a lady stopped me and she said, can I, can I talk to you for a second? And I said, sure, of course, right? I said, well, you know, what's, what's going on? And she said, I just want to thank you so much for, you know, everything that you're doing for the community and, and kind of told me what I, what I hear from residents. Um, but then she said, I want to just thank you for giving me an opportunity to have a house for my family. I recently found myself homeless. I didn't know where I was going to, you know, where we were going to live. I applied at the county. I applied with the city of Harlingen and, and had additional places where she had tried to, to seek refuge. And she said that your office and the staff were incredibly friendly, helpful, accessible, and basically held her hand the whole way. And she just wanted to, to say thank. And I said, well, I'll tell them because they're the ones that do all the great work, but I'm really glad that you're going to have a nice Christmas and you're going to be with your family. And so your work and the impact that you do it is incredible, and you should all be thanking yourself because each and every one of you take part in that. And so thank you for everything that you do. If you guys would like to come back up so we can take a photo. Yes. That's all the awards, so thank you so much. And thank you, Calista, for stepping in. We appreciate you. All right, moving on to citizen communication. Do we have anyone signed up? Um, uh, yes, ma'am, we have Amanda? three. Okay. Uh, the, the first one is Ron Lozano, 2410 Riverside. <coughs> okay. Good evening. I uh, entitled this uh, Moral Hypocrisy. Due to an influx of javelinas, a goring may occur, occur near Hugh Ramsey Park environs. That initially drew me here. Alas, now more astounding is a totalitarian propaganda concept of which Mike Mesmar and I allegedly comprehend. Some proclaimed media company which garnered $429,000 from our healthy Harlingen committee generosity 
above and beyond that $350,000 that the mayor sought for a city PR department. This latter group has a person with TV experience who allegedly, as a world traveling connoisseur of streets, declares our streets as best. That same tack is present on today's homepage of our website, where it editorially asserts financial submission by RGVHS is incomplete. Now we know why our taxes are easily squandered, based on the gall of alleged public servants who are subservient to the whims of one or two sepulvidas, because they are handsomely paid to hide behind the veneer of the Harlingen Sickle logo and cavalierly destroy the good name of respected members of our community via Giuliani style. Our tax dollars utilized to harm our own citizens. But that's the nature of inaccurate information, one I know too well. Their ire would be better served by inspecting a faulty city swimming program. So, this is Christmas. I would have liked 24 to roll in before making these truthful pronouncements. Yet, with 10 full days of this 23 Harlingen or William regime left, time to say, ya basta. Thank you, Mr. Lozano. Next one is um, Raymond Reyes and 706 Nuntucker Drive, uh, City Progress. Commission Mayor Raymond Reyes, 706 Nuntucker Drive. So there's been a, a lot of things going on and stuff um, in the city. Um, it all goes back to what I stated a couple of months back, come and do my little thing, stated on the record, that way it can never be said, it was never said, or nobody ever said anything. Uh, I think a key ingredient to anything in life is accountability and to always be informed in y'all's position. Uh, a key aspect is oversight, um, you know, to, to be in there. We're all very busy. We all do a lot of different things. I'm sure you guys have your jobs and family and stuff. I, I do the same thing. Um, drags me all over the place. I mean, I was in Westco this morning, then in Alamo, then back in Harnigan, and now I'm here, and then I got two more meetings going on. But uh, somehow or another, uh, all kinds of information makes it my way and stuff uh, that I've made aware to certain individuals and stuff because I, I'm not, I'm trying to stay away from, you know, just blasting people and stuff because I think there's a lot of positive aspects that, that are going on, but then we also got to look at the other side of the coin when there's other things going on that if we just paid a little bit more attention to detail, as they say in the military, uh, we'd have a better grasp and can prevent certain things from happening and stuff. Uh, my son came down from Dallas, visited. He's looking to do some things and, um, you know, we, we had a conversation this morning. We met with our attorneys yesterday uh, in Houston about our financial things that we're going to be doing. Uh, I, I honestly feel that with him and myself and another veteran, uh, we're going to start to hopefully see a pivot in certain aspects of control of, of property here in Harlingen. Uh, uh, San Antonio is my home, but my grandkids are here, and now there's going to be a, a new addition. So I, I just want to see good things happen. I don't want you know, to start um, doing more than I think I should as a citizen. I'm just trying to make you all aware that, uh, you know, the citizens would appreciate it if the job is done as best possible with the citizens always kept uh, in mind that this is why you guys were elected. This is why you all are in the positions that you all are in and stuff. You know, some in past times it hasn't been that way and stuff. So uh, I just, you know, wish the best and, and you guys keep doing what you do and hopefully with the, the right state of mind and for the right reasons and stuff. Uh, and I think we'll be okay. <coughs> but you know, we're gonna run into bumps in the road, but as long as we get past them and do the corrections of the course, as they say in the Navy, then we'll be okay. We can get through the minefield. It shouldn't be a problem. 
Um, that's all I got, right on the bell. So uh, thank you very much. You all have a good evening, and I appreciate your time, but I have to go. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. The next one is Robert Leftwich, 909 East Parkwood, Abusive Office. Robert Leftwich, 909 East Parkwood. I guess I'm going to have to do a two-minute drill on this one because I noticed that we've regressed, and now we, instead of getting three minutes for citizens' communication, we're down to two minutes, and then we have to wait uh, for the crowd to clear out on the awards. So anyway, I'll just I'll just start off. I just well, that, wanted, well, that's not correct. Is there three minutes? Three minutes. You've well, got three the minutes. website says two. So if you want to give me three, I'll take it. All right. Let's just start off. Uh, recently, you know, I, I haven't been here that much, but I've been watching some of the activities around the the uh, Rio Grande Valley Humane Society, and I said, you know, I have never seen the toxicity from City Hall like I have under you, Norma. It's, it's unbelievable how you attack people with misinformation. It is the most underhanded that I've ever seen. And I did not support the last mayor. And I suggest that you change your attitude and learn how to be a public servant instead of attacking everybody. You approached, you called me over in a restaurant the other day and you said, you know what, Robert, I'm looking at your taxes. I'm looking at your vote from previous commissions. Well, I hope you do. I hope you learn something because you know what? I've looked at some of your stuff too. The fact of the matter is, since you've been in office, compared to Brownsville and, and McAllen mayors, you have a largest travel expense in the valley. You've traveled and spent more taxpayer money than anybody in the valley. And the things that you drag our city manager to go do, to go over to Mission, to go over there and, and undermine a, a nonprofit organization, you should look inside. If you want to save money, you've got three people. I made, I made some suggestions about six months ago that you put all of y'all's travel expenses on the city's website, that y'all put the top five salaries of the city on the website. You talk about transparency, nobody besides this commission goes into executive session more than y'all do y'all come out we don't hear anything that we don't hear any decisions about what y'all are talking about we don't know what anybody thinks other than what you vote because y'all go in there you take your your lunch your dinner and you come out then you say okay well we're, we're going to make a motion and then we're going to vote on this the fact of the matter is y'all don't have any transparency. Y'all are out of control. Your spending's out of control. We just heard about the media department. We never had a $400,000 budget for a media department before. What is that? That's a state-sponsored media. Now we see that you're abusing it. That's abuse of office. You can't go in and disparage an organization like the Rio Grande Valley Humane Society and say, oh, well, they've got a million dollar uh, payroll budget, and then you don't explain it. You take it out of context. Then you all link something to it that all it says is, oh, not provided. Well, let's see the rest of that financial report, the, the rest of that financial information that's, that they provided to you guys. Did you all not understand that that was for two cities, or you all just wanted to mislead the public? Because obviously, from what, you, what I've heard from the taxing that y'all do, when you come out and you say, you know what, the rate, oh, but we lowered the rate. But you know it's the levy, not the rate. And if the state says that you increase your levy $1, you have to declare that as a tax increase. And that's what you need to be doing on social media instead of trying to tell Thank everybody you, Mr. that you lowered the rate. Anything else, Amanda? Uh, no, no. All right. Okay, moving on to item two, approval of minutes. Item 2A, regular meeting of November 1, 2023. Are there any amendments or changes? Is there a motion? Motion approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> item three, consent agenda. We are going to be um, removing item C. Is there a motion to approve? The rest of the consent agenda? Motion. And D, I'm sorry. Pulling D and C. Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item uh, 3C, consideration and possible action to approve a request from Remy Garza Election Administra Administrator for Cameron County to use the City Town Hall Room and the Harlingen Culture Arts Center as an early voting site for the March 5th, 2024 primaries, Tuesday, February 20th through Friday, February 23rd from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday, February 24th, and Sunday, February 25th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Monday, February 26th through Friday, March 1st, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. One second. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Are we going to be providing the staff for this, or are they going to provide their own? 
I, it is my understanding that they provide their own okay. staff. They just need the accommodations. And for the record, um, Commissioner Lopez has abstained from this vote. And is there any other questions? No, that's okay. it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And item D, consideration and possible action to approve the installation of speed humps in the following locations. Uh, Dilworth Road between Garrett Road and County, County Lane. Um, 200 and 300 block of Oregon Street and 200 and 300 block of Oklahoma of Oklahoma Street um, and make, Daniel. I'll make a motion to approve. I'm going to add Vincent Avenue to that list. Second. And I'd also oh, like oh. to add. Yes, sir. Uh, Rio Hondo Road uh, down near the Transition Academy, that school zone area we need down there, and on 25th Street between Monroe and Jackson. I, well, Any other? I, I got one more then. Okay. Uh, I was looking for a city block, but. Uh, please add, uh, just, I want to say, north of the uh, Arroyo Park on New Hampshire. Please. And then I'll make a motion to approve, subject to the supplementation by Commissioner uh, Morales, Commissioner <coughs> Hensley, and myself. Second. Second. Mm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And just for the public and the community that may be watching, this is for Oscar to take into account and then go and do the studies to ensure that it is needed in this area. Right? Wonderful. Meets those requirements. Okay, moving on to new business. Let me see. We're going to just take things a little bit out of order. Do five first. That's word. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, just because I know we have many in uh, veterans in the, in the in the room today, and I don't want to make you wait any more than I have to, um, especially because you've done so much for us. It is the least that we can do. So I want to go ahead and move on to item five, and then we'll circle back to item four. Um, consideration and possible action to accept or deny the don donation from the Vietnam Veterans of America LRGB Chapter 856 for the construction and installation of a Vietnam Killed in Action Memorial Monument and to approve the location. Javier? Yes, Mayor, City Commission, for the record, um, my name is Javier Mendez, the Parks and Rec Director. And so the, um, the organization approached the uh, Parks Advisory Board um, and they requested um, to see if we could uh, accept the donation of this monument. And so the, um, the monument or the location that they're requesting is to be placed next to the, um, the large monument at the uh, Veterans Memorial. And so the, um, the monument's going to be made out of uh, uh, black granite. Uh, it'll have all the names that are listed there. Um, and um, the Park Advisory Board did vote, and they, um, they did a vote to accept the location. Um, it'll be on the right side of the, um, the Vietnam Vet uh, Monument. Uh, the, the monument's going to measure six and a half feet tall, five feet wide, um, and again, it's going to be um, polished black granite. Um, there are members um, that are here. I know that probably want to speak about it. Uh, but again, they we took we did take it to the Park Advisory Board on November 21st, um, and they did vote to uh, approve the the uh, monument and the location. Wonderful. Um, is there anyone that wishes to speak? Please approach the the podium. I'm Victor Sabala. I live in Brownsville, but I'm a part of this group that's out of Harlingen, the chapter, local chapter 856. Um, I think it's time that this, this get done. It's been 53 years since it warranted. There has been some concern, concerns about the, the location of the monument that uh, would detract from the park. I don't know why it would detract from the park. I think it would make it improve the park. Also, uh, concerns about the, um, the foundation, whether it's strong enough to support the monument or not. And I think the city people here would know what they need to do to put the granite uh, there for the citizens to see. It's something that's long, long overdue. Long overdue. You know, and there for a while I thought that this maybe, maybe it's a racist thing because the majority of the people on this <laughs> list are Hispanic. 
Is that right? It's Hispanic. And the other thing that I want, uh, especially Commissioner Morales to understand, where's the Veterans Park in Harlingen? So as far as the location, I think uh, everybody knows that the Veterans Park is at Pendleton Park, and that's where it needs to be. Um, we ask that you that, that you go with this. Uh, we're going to pay for this. We've got the money to pay for this. All we need is for you guys to say, let's do it. Because most of us are in our 70s, late 70s, approaching 80s. We can't wait two months, three months, six months, because who knows how long we're going to be here. And we want to see this done before we die. Because veterans never leave another veteran behind. And these guys have been, forgot been forgotten for too long. Thank you. Sir, just real quick. Uh -huh. Quick question. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, my, my only concern about this is are we sure that that's a complete list? Yes. All right. You're pretty sure about that? Yeah, we're pretty sure about that, yes. How are you able to compile the list of names? Uh, research, uh, okay. Vietnam Veterans um, Indexes. Um, everybody pretty much knows who they are, okay. but the public doesn't. And you all are confident that that's a complete list? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Bert Castro. Born and raised here in Harlingen. I guess about 80% of the guys that are up there, most of these guys here, we went to school with them. We know them personally, grew up in the hood with them. And I just want to appreciate the fact that an organization, Vietnam Veterans of America, has taken this initiative. And the chairperson is from Brownsville. And he saw the need as well that we need to recognize these individuals. As far as the, the listing, I just wanted to clarify when you're, you know, respond to your question. Uh, and I believe the chairperson of this committee, he said he would also include another name, and that's Adan Nahar. And he was born and raised here at Harlingen. He went to school in Harlingen, but unfortunately he moved, the family moved to Palm Springs back in, uh, I think he was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he is, as my understanding, will be also on that list and uh, he is recognized on a national list that you can, you know, anybody can research. And it shows the Vietnam vets killed in action from city location. Oh. And he's listed under Palm Springs, California. Mm -hmm. But he was born and raised here. And I personally know his brother-in-law and his sister, they live in Chino Hills, California. But I would hope that that individual is also included in the list. But again, that list is official and it's on the website and for Harlingen, that's the list that's there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we stand ready to make uh, make changes that need to be made. Mm -hmm. How long uh, do you think it takes to create that? Not long. Uh, I mean, you know, from putting the order. We've in. already put. Uh, we've already talked to the vendor, and the vendor's ready to uh, to go for it. We uh, we can raise money. We've got the money to get it done. Vendor is located where? Here in Harlingen. Okay, local vendors, so we're putting money right back in here, okay? The only thing we ask of the city, of course, is the base and some lighting, and that's it. Absolutely. We'll take care of the rest. And we are part of a national organization, as is the uh, LULAC <clears throat> and the American GI Forum that's concerned about veterans' issues. And this is one of the issues, forgetting our own, mm -hmm. that is very, very serious. Very hard for us to take. <coughs> I lost my best friend in Vietnam on December the 15th. Our commander lost his best friend in Vietnam on December the 7th. So for us, this is a very tough part of the year. And we'd like to see this done ASAP. Thank you. Thank you. Don Ray Leonard, Veterans Advisory Board. Mr. Samuel Cardenas and members of the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 856 attended our Veterans Advisory Board meetings in December, November and December to give a presentation on the Vietnam Veterans Killed in Action Monument proposed to be constructed and installed at Pendleton Park Veterans Memorial Site. Members of the VAB did our due diligence by visiting Pendleton Park to get a visual of the proposed site. I contacted Javier Mendez at Parks and Rec for historical information about the construction of the Veterans Memorial 
in relation to any potential restrictions imposed on the project during the approval process or physical issues such as water lines and runoff points that would need to be addressed. We have concerns about the proposed placement of the site of the project. First, while walking the grounds of the park, we observed muddy conditions in the grass and water pooling at the proposed site of the Veterans KIA monument. Could it be possible runoff point for the water or too much irrigation? If so, it would not be prudent to place a memorial at this proposed location. It was suggested to us that there may also be irrigation or water lines underneath the site that would need to be moved. We have identified other sites within Pendleton Park that would be better suited for the memorial. One popular suggestion would be by the pond. Two other sites were identified along the parkway that runs adjacent to the Veterans Memorial. If the monument was placed inside the boundaries, if the monument was placed inside the boundaries of the Veterans Memorial, it would appear to lack uniformity and would not aesthetically fit the flow of the Veterans Memorial. We believe the Veterans Memorial should be a standalone monument. Additionally, if we open the door for this monument piece to be constructed within the confines of the Veterans Memorial, we will then be compelled to entertain proposals for monuments representing any and all groups to do the same, running the risk of overcrowding the Veterans Memorial. We appreciate the intent and spirit of this project. Our recommendation is twofold. The Veterans Advisory Board enthusiastically endorses this worthwhile endeavor. The monument is a proper tribute to these local heroes who lost their lives while serving our country. As one gentleman said, it's been a long time coming, and we agree. With regard to location, we do not recommend the initial proposed site for placement and pray the commission opts for a more viable location within the park. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Leonard. Um, Javier, I, you know, I and I, I appreciate Ms. Ms. Leonard's um, points, and they're and they're valid, and I understand them. But the, for me, and I don't know what the rest of the commission wants to do. I would really like to do what it is they want and where they want it. And I, and I say this because these gentlemen, um, they're very proud uh, of, of, of their service and their families and their sacrifice. I know my father-in-law, he fought in Vietnam and he you know, wasn't killed in action, but before he passed, he proudly wore the Vietnam hat. I mean, we, everybody knew that he was a veteran and this is, it's, we're coming to a point that in 10, 20, 30 years, there's no longer going to be folks like these gentlemen before us asking for something for their friends. And so because they're so intimately connected to this cause, I'd really like to honor them in a way that they're going to feel happy about it. And so if that means that you need to to communicate maybe a little better and find a location. If it isn't this location, it's a location that they choose. Um, obviously, we want to be responsible, and I don't want there to be any issues. And obviously, with the integrity of the monument and the lifespan, and I think that you know that's what Miss Leonard is is trying to convey because I know she's very she's a big advocate for for veterans, and it has don't want it to feel like that she's not in support or that the Veterans Advisory Board is not in support. I think that that is not what's at play here. It's just making sure that it's going to, and what is what y'all want. You want it to last forever for you, for generations to come. And that's what I would like too. And so maybe we can come up with a solution that, that appeases or, or, or is what it is that you want. Um, unless you tell me that it's fine exactly where it's at and there are no issues and our city engineer and, and everyone signs off on it. But if not, um, I really want to make sure that it is in a location where they can be proud and they're not being set aside and they feel that they're not being respected or valued. Well, I mean, it, to me it makes a lot of sense, right, to have it next to the Vietnam Absolutely. monument, right? And so there, there has been the other group um, from the committee from the uh, Pendleton um, 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 veteran, the uh, monument, the uh, Memorial veterans Park. memorial, right? 
they suggested to have it here on, along the trail. Uh, there's a kiosk here with, with uh, they provide information. And so this trail, we did name it as the Harringen Hometown uh, Heroes Trail because it, it tied into the Veterans Memorial. Um, this is the location that the, um, the Vietnam Vet uh, Organization would like it. And then this was another location that um, the committee had recommended. And I'll show you, um, just kind of see, what I did, I superimposed a pink monument, right? So it kind of fits in somewhat. Um, and then this is the black one. Um, so I, I superimposed a black monument, black granite monument. Um, let me go back. And that is where it... That's where the, the, the Vietnam uh, Veterans Organization would like it. Okay. And is there any reason why we can't have it there? No. And so there is, there is irrigation. And so... Um, as Ms. Leonard was talking about, there is ponding, but what was happening is that the timer on the irrigation, we had it too long. And so mm -hmm. I went out there, when I did go out there and take pictures, I did bring it to their attention. So they they pulled back on the on the, um, the timing mm -hmm. of the irrigation. So right now it's dry. Um, but I was gonna show you the, um, so this is a, um, a, a view of the, the Harlingen Hometown Heroes Trail uh, where they were referring, right? And so this is that kiosk with the information, and then this is where they were suggesting to put the, uh, the monuments. Who is they? Um, well, it was one individual, which was um, Sal uh, Carmona with the... Um, that's why I want to make a comment. Oh, the Ms. Veterans Perpiti. Uh, Memorial Committee, or whatever they call themselves, this isn't their main job to sell pavers. They have nothing to do with the city, as I understand it. And the advisory board... Mm -hmm. It's just an advisory board. As I see on there, the Veterans Advisory Board was created to advise the city commission on needs of local veterans, the resources available to local veterans, and programs that could benefit the needs of local veterans and their families. It doesn't say nothing about passing a vote on uh, where we're going to put a memorial or not. Y yes, okay. sir. Um, just, you know, we really do value Sergeant Carmona. I know he does a lot for veterans a year. I mean, I talked to him very closely and, and he's he's in support of all veterans and he is a veteran and I absolutely. don't want to disparage him in any way um, and the Veterans Advisory Board they are to advise the Commission you're absolutely right and and we want to do what the you know, I, I want for it to be your your decision and, and you know where you want it to be we just want to make sure that it's being re we're responsible in doing it and if right. um, those notes we passed out on the October 20th when you guys met and approved the, the, the parks yeah, I, I think where you want to put it, it's fantastic. I, I love the color of it. I think it's mm -hmm. going to, uh, with the black and all that, look fantastic. Sure. What I would like to say to the commission is if it's if we're going to put it up there, I want it to look very nice. And so I'd ask that the commission also not only approve the accepting of this, but approve additional money to put in a nicer, like, a, a concrete walkway to it with the lights and all that. Because people are going to want to go and take photos next to it with their families and all that. And so to whatever, how much would it cost... Uh, Oscar, yeah, okay. Then so if we want to make Holland Harlan, Harlan proud, correct. Thank so that, let, let me I, interject. Well, you know that you have my unwavering correct. support. I've, all, I've I've expressed that on multiple multiple occasions. I think the entire commission and the the city of Harlingen, the advisory board, everyone wants you know wants to be able to honor honor you and 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 just like I said, we just want to make sure it's. It's done. It's done right, but um, I think that's a, a fantastic idea. Ultimately, you know, the commission will will vote will vote on that. But um, I think it's I think it's a it it looks sharp the way that you. Put, I mean, yeah. I don't see anything. I, like I don't think it takes away. If anything, it it it's an extra attraction, and hopefully, more visitors will 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 head to that to that area. Correct. Thank you. Okay, let me ask a question or so, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. That the Parks and Rec Board actually visit the site? Not the board, no, sir. What's that? No, sir. The board did not. Uh, so visit they just the site. took a recommendation. Right. Okay. What about the other board? I know the uh, uh, Veterans Advisory Board did. Um, the Veterans Memorial Committee. That's him, and that's where they wanted. Correct. Is that correct? I'm sorry. The the, the Veterans Memorial Committee. Right. That's them. No. No, that's not them. No, 
No, that's okay. El Carmona. No, those are the guys that sell the papers. Okay, so those are the ones who also who great ended up men. Yes, great <laughs> men. Yes, because yes. our commander is part of that. Yes, too. yes. Okay, but they uh, sell papers. That's what they do. All right, let, let me ask you. With them more I understand that. Let me ask you something. I've been to uh, the Veterans Memorial at the mall in Washington, D.C., multiple times. And that's been very moving to me. Yes, sir. Okay, the first time I showed up there was in the early 2000s. That stood alone, away and alone. <coughs> Years later, the same concept it, that we have right now at Peloton Park is put in, in, at that mall. And every war that's happened, Korean, WW1, 2, so on the line, is there. I've been there. I've seen it. What stood out to me and still stands out to this day, and it will till the day I die, that Veterans Memorial at the mall is set aside, and those guys always move me. This that you want, I don't have an issue with the monument. I do have a little concern, okay? That picture right there, I like it. Go to the other one. Javier, please. The, so the other one, of course, they were suggesting is on the way out of the, the park, right? Um, yeah, put us at the exit or put us by the pond. But, but here's my point. It's more visible, and these gentlemen, they deserve to be seen and not put in with the others. This is where you approved it. These guys approved it. Okay, who's they? Who's they? So he's referring to the Park Advisory Board. So okay, but here's my point. The only one, they approved it under his suggestion. How many of those people actually went there and saw the location? That I don't know. I that's, that. that's my point, sir. Okay, that it's is my point. to you guys to decide now. Okay? Yes. And I, and I, I said, I said we're part of a national organization and we have to take this to court and fight this, we will. It's and I'd hate to see hardened and embarrassed by something as simple as this. Nobody's going to take this memorial away. Okay, the only thing is I wanted to give it more recognition, more views. That's all I'm asking for. Keep, keep in consideration the old guys that are going to have to walk around to the duck pond to see this. And if it's right along the parkway, guess what? They can drive and see it, correct? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be better? No. They, they, they won't be able to park their cars and see it. Put it in the bottom wheel then. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, I think yeah, I'm ready to make a motion. Unless, uh, Commissioner President, you want to say something? Sorry, you look like you want to say something. <laughs> uh, the veterans on the commission are, are, are awfully, awfully quiet. <laughs> the two veterans just, are quiet. Yes, yes. Um, I just, I want, I want, um, if, if I have the, if I understand this correctly, you gentlemen served in Vietnam. Yes? Right? Everybody? And that's why you're part of this organization and you're very proud. And you are the men that know the men that are going to be listed on this monument. And you know, and they're, they're your friends, they're the people you served with, and you want to honor them. And you want it where you said you want it. Is that correct? Okay. And I think that's what, what's getting lost here, Commissioner. I understand your, your reservations, but ultimately, who are we to decide where they have uh, their, their monument? I didn't serve, and, and I... And I, and I have, and I've known people that have served, and they were very fortunate to double back and be back. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, they're gone. And it is in their honor, in their memory, that I would like to see this memorial be there for a lot longer than what I'll be around or anybody else, okay? All right. They want it right smack in the middle to where there's a potential water leak that uh, Mr. Mendez has to make sure that there's no piping underneath. So what about this, Commissioner? Um, I think we should be moving on, and I know there's going to be a motion on the floor, but I have full confidence in our city staff, um, our engineer, our public works department, and our parks department, and you know, make sure that, that they cross all their T's, dot all their I's, and make sure that it's a, it's a safe uh, location for it. And I, I really think that we should, we should honor the request. And I know that, um, that there's been a lot of talk on it. And if before we take the motion, Commissioner Pettis, do you have anything to say? Word. I do, if I may. Yes, sir. Sure. I enlisted in 1971. By the time I got out of boot camp and out of school, 
President Nixon had decided we weren't going to send any more. So I went to 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, and sat in Thailand waiting for him to change his mind, and he did <coughs> not do that. So I didn't make it there. I was on my way, <laughs> but I didn't make it there. You guys have my respect, because if, if I'd have been born a year earlier, I would have been one of you. So I support your decision. You did Mayor, your part. Mayor, 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 yes, sir. Again, uh, we hope that you guys put it to a vote, and we support your position. It's our monument, you know, honor of our confidence that we come back. So, How many of you guys served? Those at the you? end. No, I didn't. No, that's why you're negative. No, sir. Yes, you are. But you know what I'm going to do, I, sir? I stop. That's it. I okay. Yes, let's... Run it to a vote, please. Let's... Um, yes, sir. Madam Chair, my name is Juan Ortega. I myself is a Vietnam veteran. I served in 1967 to 68. One of the people mentioned here uh, is my deceased brother-in-law. Julian Cordero. Over here, I have a point of order on the way it's written. It's already been presented and approved, and it was only to be accepted or denied, but not to be discussed at the location. You already accept it or deny the location, but if, if that's the case, the, point, the only point of order I have is the addition of that other veteran which needs to make it more proper by specifying his rank and added, adding him on the list, which should, uh, this should go back to make it more formal as a point of order. But as far as the location, whether Mr. Uh, Commissioner Morales was saying, the location was already specified. And then you said, when well, you presented those three monuments, and I said, and you said that you were in concurrence with a, a location nearby, or, or also the other location, which was, could be approved or denied. And you did not. You gave a, a question about why why would it be wrong on the other three, uh, right next to the other three. Well, there's nothing wrong, but you also said, which I accepted, that, that the other location that the uh, this chapter wants. You did not give a reason as to why it shouldn't be there. And that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. <clears throat> May I have the last word? Yes, sir. I will be voting, gentlemen, in favor of your request. Thank you. Okay? I'm not out here to do battle with you. Okay? Like I've said it, like I've said, I want this to be there for a lot longer than you think. <clears throat> And I want complete exposure to the names of the, of the vets that never came back. That's my goal. You want it there, you'll have it there. I want the public to recognize that you guys put it there. Mm -hmm. okay. um, thank you. Um, I guess since everybody else has put in their two cents, I'll say mine. Um, all I want to say is I want to thank you guys for bringing this to our attention. Um, uh, thank you for remembering your brothers. Um, they've earned it, and you've earned this. So, thank you. Thank you. I'll make the motion to approve uh, acceptance of this gift. Furthermore, I ask that this commission uh, give the appropriate funding to Oscar so that he can create the proper base and make sure that we don't have the sprinklers have any issues or anything like that. So that it's properly set up with the proper lighting uh, so that we can give our proper respects. Second. Uh, uh, Commissioner, can we also approve the location? Oh, at the location specified and approved by um, the donors. There you go. And I don't know if there's any, um, if this is a commission issue in terms of the, the way that they're identified. I, I, I don't know if that's something that we can do, but I would encourage um, you all to review it one more time and make sure that you're honoring. Make sure it's complete. Yes, yes. All right, um, so we have a, a, a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you all for your service. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> You're welcome to stay. <laughs> um, now, moving back to item four.
consideration and possible action to approve the participation of the mayor and city commissioners in the 2024 It's Time Texas Community Challenge and execute a challenge pledge form. Uh, Javier. Yes, Mayor, City Commission again, uh, Javier Mendez, Parks and Rec Director for the record. Um, so as we do every year, we uh, participate in the uh, It's Time Texas Community Challenge. And so what we want to do, I'm not sure if Galista is still here. Uh, we want to take a picture of you all signing your pledges and uh, so we can upload those. But um, just uh, a little summary. So the, the challenge, the community challenge is eight weeks long. It's statewide competition. And so, um, of course, the goal is to transform the community's health. Um, and so the, the, the challenge is going to be, it starts January 8th and will run through March 3rd, 2024. And so uh, we want to get as many people registered as possible and participating in the program. And so uh, the mayor has, has uh, made it a challenge for staff uh, to get people out and, and register. And so we started today with uh, the firefighters. We went out to the fire stations. Uh, we got about 25 registered, uh, which is one, I guess, the A shift. Um, and so we're going to go back and do the B shift. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to go to Public Works and um, register them as well. So uh, we want to kick this off um, with the um, mayor and city commission uh, following their pledges. Okay, so um, you need us to, yes, so what to I did approve do, it and then do the photos? Yeah, so what I did do is on in front of you, there's some manila folders with the pledge and uh, there are some flyers in there with the QR code so we can uh, share with friends and family uh, so we can get these, um, get as many people registered as possible. And so another thing we are going to do is we're going to reach out to uh, the school district uh, and uh, I think they've already started uh, their campaign and so we're reaching out to Walmart and HEB um, and some of the other larger uh, employers. Wonderful. So. <clears throat> I just want to go and put on the record that I beat the mayor last year, and I intend to do it again this year. <laughs> I just want to make sure that and hopefully we minimize the cheating. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. Checking you I, the same place eight, ten times a day. I yeah. have taken care of that, and um, with uh, Mr. Mendez's assistance and Celine's and all others, that there won't be ways for folks to to cheat to win. Like, sta uh, like Stanford, two, like getting on the road team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it'll be fair, and I and I think also there. Is, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but this time everyone will start the same because I know there was another city that had a, a ton of points um, to start off with, and so it'll be more even even playing field. So it'll be interesting to see um, how that impacts uh, individual participants. <laughs> right, so the, the, we get a $5,000 for the pledge tonight and then we get another 5000 for uh, the pledge where we already uh, we pledged to participate. Um, and then the kickoff will be uh, January 8th and it'll, they're going to kick it off in um, Westaco. Yes. At the LRGVDC um, office. And so um, we're all going to be there. We ordered shirts for everybody, so we'll, we'll all have short shirts with uh, the Time Texas logo on it. Um, and so, and we'll hand those out to, to everyone. And then we're also going to have activities uh, during the eight week session uh, or we eight, eight week challenge uh, where we're going to have the walk with the mayor, walk with the commission, and then possibly with the chiefs and uh, do a friendly competition. So. We may have to start walking with others first. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, no, we're really excited. I think that everyone is committed, and I'm excited for the city of Harlingen and for the community to get involved. I have spoken with the district, and they're they're excited, and some of the larger employers in our community. So it's going to be a great um, it's going to be a great season for us. And one thing that you know, like I said, the the goal is to make our community healthier, and so mm -hmm. some people have continued after last year's. Uh, challenge and public you know works. public works is you know they're still doing it you know so um, kudos to them we love that and so I know Oscar said they still stretch and they come together and yeah and that's wonderful that's, awesome. that's and that and that you know a healthy workforce 
is a stronger workforce and does better for our community and overall for, for, for them and their families too. So this is an excellent, excellent opportunity to just to improve. Um, and thank you, Javier, for your commitment to this challenge. So do we have a motion to approve? Make a motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion grant. Motion aye. carries. And start signing it. Okay. So now we just. Well, I just signed it. Okay. What would you like for us to do? Um, I think it would be easier on the table so I can get actual shots of you actually signing. All right. Okay. Randy, you want to go first? All those together? Frank, you can pretend like you're signing it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have to pretend as well. <laughs> just remember, it's like high school theater. <laughs> One last thing, I, I, Commissioner Lopez brought up uh, something about weight. So, reminded me we're going to have a, um, a weight loss challenge um, January 30th, um, and so we're we're participating in this with the UT School of Public Health, and so um, we want to kick that off uh, January 30th. Awesome, and we'll have more details about that. Coming up soon, right? All right, thank you, Javier. Let's see. I got one more. And you have one more. Item six, <coughs> consideration impossible. I didn't, hear the vote on the, I didn't hear a vote, I just heard the motion. Uh, first, uh, Commissioner Lopez, and second, the Commissioner Perez. Oh. The, the we didn't vote? We, we did. did vote. Okay. okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those? Motion carries. Thank you, Mayor. Uh -huh. Item six, consideration and possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading, amending the Harlingen Code of Ordinances, master fee schedule, establishing a storage fee for the HEB Tennis Center. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Oh, sorry, make the motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Item seven, presentation and possible action, establishing new garbage pickup services for residential routes beginning March 4, 2024. Oscar. Good evening, Mayor. Commissioner uh, Oscar Garcia, uh, Assistant City Manager, External Services. Uh, back in uh, the workshop in March 2023, as the previous Public Works Director, we proposed uh, reducing our, our residential pickup uh, from six days to four days. So, and then in May, we came before you again and requesting a budget amendment and uh, to be allowed to purchase three ad uh, additional residential refuse trucks. And then in October, we came back again for, for a budget amendment to allow us to hire those drivers for uh, the implementation of that. Everything's in place now. 
we are ready to start the implementation of a four-day uh, uh, week pickup. And our goal is to start March the 4th. Uh, I spoke to a city manager. Uh, this will give us uh, two weeks or so to prepare a video so we can educate the uh, constituents mm -hmm. or prepare the constituents, give them an, an, enough ample, ample notice. And I, I think that's a... Uh, but I'll let Christopher Torres here uh, give you a breakdown on where the division is and what will get picked up on Mondays and Thursdays and the other ones on Tuesdays and Fridays and the benefit of doing this. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, um, Public Works Director Christopher Torres for the record. Um, so we prepared a, just a, a, a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation. The, this has a lot of the slides that we presented during the, the workshop back in March. So, um, like Mr. Garcia was mentioning, we right now we currently uh, pick up Monday through Saturday. So the reason behind changing the routes, it, it's got a lot to do with maintenance, uh, fuel efficiency, and, and having our trucks uh, basically the most of the week are on the road. Um, so this is the current map that we have. We have seven routes, <coughs> and they're basically scattered all over the city. Um, it's not efficient. Um, it, we, we place uh, a whole bunch of overtime um, with our staff. And so this, um, the proposed residential routes are basically um, going to four days out of the, out of the week. We, uh, we will be picking up Monday uh, and Thursday and then Tuesday and Friday um, with still servicing our constituents two times a week. And this would be the, the proposed map. So our, our, basically our dividing line would be commerce. Everything west of commerce, we have uh, done the homework and we created 10 polygons with the help of engineering. Um, we created 10 polygons. Within each polygon, we had parcels, right? So we, we had the parcels within each polygon, but then we went out and did our homework out on the field and make sure that we, we corrected those parcels and co actually corrected service points. So, and then the same thing for the uh, east side of commerce. We, it, it's just the same thing, right? 10, 10 polygons, 10 routes, and then the number of, of parcels. So this is the, the west side of commerce. We have 10 routes, which will be service Monday and Thursday. Um, and then we have an average of 1,054 service points per uh, route. And then on our east side of commerce, basically the same thing, but the service days will be Tuesdays and Fridays with the 10 routes and an average uh, of 1,095 service points. And this is basically the same slide that we had back in the workshop, which is some of the benefits that, that we have by going back to, to four days out of the week versus six. <coughs> Some of the overtime expenditures, uh, as, as we mentioned back in, in March as well, um, our overtime expenditures have been climbing since, since, since 2019, right? And so just, just to put it in perspective, um, just in the last three years, we've paid almost, almost $160,000 just in overtime. Excuse me, how much? Over 160000 sir. In overtime? Yes, sir. And so, again, back in March, we had some of these projected savings, right? Um, we were, were uh, anticipating that we're going to reduce the overtime by $300,000, reduce fuel costs by $60,000, and reduce the maintenance by $102,000 by going to, to these four-day uh, pickup. How long is that, those projected savings for? Like, is that in a year, single year? It, it, so that is pro uh, projected in the next three years, oh, right? that's a three-year projection? Yes, sir. Yes. And does that include uh, the cost of the new trucks? Does that include the salaries for the drivers and all that? It does. Okay. Great. Can you go yes. back one more time? Sure. So is 460, that's the middle, right? Yeah, 462,000 that we save. Okay. okay. And um, just want to reiterate, uh, folks will still have the twice a week pickup. That is correct, Mayor. It's just yes. kind of a restructuring, so that way you're being uh, saving saving the tax dollars 
on, on this project, but at the same time providing the same service, just tweaking it a little bit. Is that it right? is, yes. Everybody will still receive the two uh, twice a week uh, service. It just, you know, it gives us a little bit of time for uh, it was for Wednesdays. We'll be doing that yes. maintenance <laughs> on that we don't currently have in our trucks. Right now they run Monday through Saturday. Right. Sundays we, our fleet is, is closed and therefore the, the maintenance of our trucks is not there. And this will also help the life time of the equipment right? it is mm -hmm. yes okay wonderful well, we you know thank you both so much i know uh, that oscar you started with this um initially right when you when you came on and this is a project that you were working towards and chris thank you know both of you have done an amazing job and i couldn't be prouder of the of the work that you guys do to try to save money it's incredible so thank you so much i have a as you were coming on board i know miss lindner were ask, was asking for that 55 plus community where she lives and the other one, there's people that winter Texas that are here half a year and they really don't need two time, two a week, uh, two time a week pickups. Did you take that into consideration to where she wanted, she was looking, not she, but her whole community was looking for a one day pickup. We did, we did, Commissioner, and, and, and I know it got discussed here with Council, and, and Council decided to keep it at two pickups uh, oh, a week. And if I remember correctly, I think that part of that discussion was that we didn't really have any kind of um, petition or any kind of um, outcry from the, the residents that live there. I know we had um, one public comment in that regard, but other than that, have you, has anyone else reached out to you wanting to change? No, not currently, Mayor. Okay. Yeah, so we can't, we got to be very careful when we're saying it represents it all when we, we definitely don't know that. So, but I think that this is a, an excellent uh, way to save money, a lot more than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Well Thank done, you. guys. Well yes. done. Yes. Yeah. Kudos. Um, Item A, consideration and possible <coughs> action to amend the budget for a deputy chief building official position. Have yet? Motion to approve. Yes. <laughs> Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. And Javier, I know that you want, had a lot to say, but we just, I know I'm just going to speak here for the entire commission and let them, and, and just say thank you for all the work yeah. you're doing. You guys are doing double the work with yeah. the same team. So this is definitely necessary and is going to kind of ease the burden just a little. And we're, you know, you guys are rocking and rolling over there. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the support. Absolutely. All right, item nine, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution and an agreement for a depository and banking service between the City of Harlingen and, and Plains Capital Bank. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank and thank you, Robert. Item 10, consideration and possible action to approve a $10 discount fee for any of the following races at the Harlingen Marathon in a one-time code would be administered for each to increase the number of participants for running clubs, HCISD employees, veterans, and military, City of Harlingen employees, and City of Harlingen elected officials. I would like to add, uh, HCIS, it says HCISD employees. I'd like to add the students, any of the students that are oh. in the cross country teams I like them in fact if we could do more than a, a ten dollar one for the students just I leave that to your consideration uh, Cassandra okay uh, and then I would like to also give a discount to first responders so for law enforcement uh, STEC or you know uh, EMS uh, firefighters all those guys and gals all right um, <laughs> <laughs> how many, uh, quickly. is there yes sir how many runners do you anticipate uh, we last year we had 1,100, so this year we're anticipating at least 1,300. We try to increase every year, so everybody here should sign up myharlingenmarathon.com. There's four races, so you don't have to run 26 miles. You can run 13.1, you can run a 5K, you can walk jog a 5K, walk jog a 13.1. You have six or seven hours to complete the course, so you can have snacks in between and it's fun and it's friendly. a good time um and you get to explore all of harlingen in a different route corn in the cup on the yeah <laughs> that goes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you'll burn them off by the time you get to the end i like the way you so speak. it works out for everybody it's the same track that or the same it's the same route correct because it's already um approved for to be a boston qualifier so we can't change it Perfect. if we do change it it'll cost money so 
Okay. No. So those first responders, it's going to just be all agencies, Correct. right? Because we have a. I know that last time we had some border patrol, and, yeah. and so just if you can throw them all in there, that'd be great. Yeah, first responders, law enforcement. We just expand that then. Yeah. And you want a, a bigger discount for students? Yeah. If you. Okay. Um, we those yeah. track or all students? I think all students, right? Because okay. it's something we want to promote, especially for especially if they check in. Maybe that's what we do. If that's doing the that's same thing, that's what time. she's going to do. All she right. said well, that we're she gonna shared it with, at the coffee yesterday. Yeah, we're going to work. Yes. Great, great. Yeah, get, get us the points, please. All so right. that's good. I'll make the motion. Anyone else? We're good. I mean, yeah, if you okay. guys. I'll make the motion to approve, subject to including HISD students and first responders and law enforcement to Second. get discounts as well. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Have a nice Thank you. Time. Item 11, consideration and possible action to move the Harlingen City Commission meeting of January 17, 2024 to January 10, 2024. Let me just ask, is, does that mean we're only going to have that one meeting or are we going to have the, the two and two? Like, are we still going to have this? We can the have two, but I, the, the last commission meeting, yeah. you all said no. So it's right. just going to be one. So this will be a one okay. for the that, month. That, okay. As long as we can uh, make it Zoom accessible. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing it through Zoom, okay. but yeah, I'm fine. I'll take it. Okay. I, I have something here that I want to add. Yeah. On this particular meeting, um, I believe we should seriously consider, in the spirit of uh, transparency and accountability, to have an open discussion dealing with the uh, Humane Society. All right? There's been a lot of misinformation. There's stuff on social media. There's stuff on newspaper. Let's get this out. I think that you're, that's not on the agenda. No, ma'am. But... That is something that should be added, in my opinion, to number 11. I don't think you can add it that way. Yeah, I don't think that. I mean, if you want to put, add something to the agenda, then go the proper channels and get someone to sign off. Um, and we'd be happy to, I'm sure these guys will put it on the agenda. But that's not, um, that's not a proper request at this time because it's not on the agenda. Basically, is that what correct, uh, Chris? Uh, Chris. Well, Sorry, Mark? Mark? Yeah, no, I mean, it, you, you could put, put it on the agenda following the traditional procedures for putting right. it on the agenda. Right. So basically what I'm asking is uh, city management to put this on the agenda, if possible. If not, I'll be chasing one of you guys I'll so I can put on this on this. Go. I'll sign off on it. All right, it. thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, so then I'll make the motion to approve consideration of possible action to move the Harlington City Commission meeting to January 17th, or from the 17th to the 10th. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And board appointments. Board? I have none, ma'am. Okay. None. I do. Sure. Nope. Um, Robert uh, Rodriguez for Rene Perez and the Terz board. And there's going to be a correction, but I'll have to wait till next time. So would that be to replace? Yes. Yes. Thank you. OK. And is there anyone else? That's it. All right. Make a motion to approve uh, Commissioner Morales' uh, selection. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that is it. We are adjourned at 6.48 p.m. <laughs> Thank you for joining us.